Okay, hi everybody. My name is Matthew. I'm, I have a special guest. My friend uh, Kevin is behind the camera. Uh, do you want to say hi? Hello. That's Kevin. <clears throat> uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, Candide by Voltaire, which I, I read, uh, I just, I just reread it, um, especially for Kevin, because uh, uh, it is one of my favorite books, and um, I just thought we'd get a kick out of it. Um, do you remember the storyline? Do you remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. I mean, yeah. So Candide is in, uh, it starts off, with, he's in Westphalia, uh, Germany, I think. And um, he's in this castle, and it's the best of all castles. And he meets... Um, and the name of the castle. What's the name of the castle? Because it's funny. It's like Baron Ten Thunder yeah, or yeah. something like that. It's humorous to me, anyway. Um, Ten Trunk. Thunder Ten Trunk. <laughs> yeah. In the castle of Baron Thunder Ten Trunk. Um and there's the Baron and the Baroness, and they have a daughter, and they have a philosopher. He kind of had Candide, uh, who very early on is described as um, a naive um, optimist. The, the full title of the book is Candide or Optimism. Mm. That's the full title. And so he's like an optimistic, kind of gullible idealist. And he meets um, Pangloss, who is the philosopher and P Pangloss fills his head with um, his philosophy which is that we live in the best of all possible worlds and if God created the world he would have obviously created the best version of the world so there can't be anything better this is the best and he like gives examples of um, kind of like crackpot examples that are funny like the reason we have noses is for our spectacles to lay upon, and the reason we have legs is for our trousers to be pulled up upon. Um, <clears throat> anyway, Candide, so he gets his head filled up with all these ideas that we live in the best of all possible worlds. And then he immediately gets caught behind a screen, kind of holding hands with the Baron's <laughs> daughter. <laughs> Naive, huh? Yeah. They're like holding. They're hands. holding hands, <laughs> and I I love like how it's so comparable to a play, because uh. it, it it brings it up like behind a screen. Mm. You know, just just like what would be in a play, like sure. Um, you can see the shadow. <laughs> yeah, you can see the shadow, and the Baron like boots him out of uh, basically what he thinks is like paradise. He's living in the best castle with the best Baron. He has the best philosopher who has the best philosophy. So Candide goes off into the world with his head filled with this idea that we're in the best possible world. Doesn't he like get kicked out of the place and then he's immediately sold into slavery? Ah, uh, he gets like <laughs> bad things start happening. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, at this point, nothing good is about to happen to Candy. <laughs> um, he gets, like, mixed up in, like, some military. He gets flogged and whipped. And uh, someone throws, like, boiling oil on him or Ooh. acid or something. Um, like, at some point, he, like, meets these people. And he's like, hi, like, I'm Candide. And they go, like, oh, do you believe the Pope is the Antichrist? <laughs> and he's like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, like, the, the book is, like, a series of, like, tr trials and t tortures that are about to, like, be put upon him. But, Andy. So, like, a little while goes on, and he, um, he meets uh, this homeless beggar type, and he has, like, leprosy, and he's, like, missing his nose, and it mentions uh, with every cough there's a tooth. <laughs> they spit out a tooth with every cough. Yeah. And it turns out it's uh, Pangloss. I remember that. He finishes one chapter describing <laughs> this hideous form. Yeah. And and then in the, the first word of the next chapter is Pangloss. Pangloss, <laughs> my old buddy. And so he's in love with uh, Cunigod. Cunigod. Oh, yeah. And that's the Baron's daughter. The one he was kicked out for holding hands with. And uh, 
He goes, Pangloss, like, how, how's Cuna God? And he goes, well, she's dead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he passes out. No, 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 no. He goes, he goes she's dead. And it, it's like, there's something from no doubt from weeping. Right. Oh, yeah, I've got, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Tell, tell the camera. <laughs> what what illness fell upon her? She was weeping for my loss. And he, and he goes, she was disemboweled <laughs> after being raped as much as a person could be raped. Oh, <laughs> oh man. He goes, uh, the Baron was chopped up into pieces. Oh, and, man. Uh, they, they did something to the Baroness. And uh, uh, Cunegard had a brother, mm. uh, which is only mentioned in one line. Enough to let you know that he was raped too. Oh God, yeah. Oh, Brutal. Yeah. Uh, the the castle. They say there was not enough for one stone to be on top of another. That's how much it oh. was just like obliterated. <laughs> um, and at this point, like one of my favorite things about the book is that everyone that dies, like, basically keeps popping back up into life. Like, mm. they'll like run into somebody and go. Like, oh my god, like, I thought you were dead. And you go, no. You go, like, you were hanged. <laughs> and you go, turns out it's not always fatal. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the, 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 the book is also, like, this, uh, it's very similar to, like, a Gulliver's Travels. So they're traveling, like, they're going all over the known world and having, like, adventures. Um, at one point they end up in El Dorado. Oh. Um, and, City of gold, huh? Yeah, and uh, they're like scooping up. Like the kids are playing with gold, playing with jewels and emeralds, and um, they go to like they have no, they have no money, and uh, they like go to like a inn to have a meal, and they like put the gold pieces that they found in El Dorado, and like the people that live there go like, why did you just put all the dirt <laughs> on on the table? Yeah. So they're like they're in paradise. And they, they describe El Dorado and say, like, like we don't have any war. We don't have... Everyone's taken care of. Everybody's healthy. Um, we all believe the same things. You're free to do whatever you like. And at this point, um, uh, Candy had lost everybody except, like, uh, this other guy. His name's, like, Kakambe or something. Well, anyway, they get this idea. They're like, well, look at all this loot. If we load up on all this gold and we go back to Europe, we're going to be, like, richer than all of Spain. They talk to the king, and the king's like, yeah, if you want to just take piles of dirt, like, we don't care. Like, you sure you don't want to stay? Like, this is a really nice place. You're really comfortable. They're like, no, we're going to go back. They load up eight sheep, and the red sheep, and they load them up with, uh, like, bags and bags of jewels and gold and all this stuff, and they get out of El Dorado. And they immediately lose everything. <laughs> like, the sheep are dying on the way. Uh, they have one sheep left. And he just, like, gets swindled. They take the... And he's back being worse off than he was. Um, he meets uh, Martin, who's a another kind of philosophical character. And he's the opposite of... Also, throughout all of these calamities... <laughs> Candide keeps exclaiming, he goes, oh, best of all possible worlds. <laughs> um, and M Martin is, <clears throat> is the person that uh, is more of like a rational, like the rational um, counterpart to Pangloss. Uh, actually, I, I bookmarked one thing. If you don't mind, if I read it to you. Please do. Uh, so this is Candide talking to Martin. Um, he goes, do you believe that men always butchered one another the way they do today? Candide asks. Do you believe they have always been liars, rogues, traitors, ingrates, brigands, weaklings, inconsistent, cowards, enviers, gluttons, drunkards, misers, self-seekers, bloodthirsty, slanderers, debauchees, fanatics, hypocrites, and fools? And Martin responds, Do you believe that hawks have always eaten pigeons wherever they found them? Okay. <laughs> uh, and he goes, yes. 
and Morton says, if hawks have always had the same character, why would you expect men to have changed theirs? Hmm. And that's like the great thing about the book is it it, it takes real um, social issues, like terrible things that happen in the world, and just starts like cranking up the level of extreme to to make it entertaining, to like really show you like as clear as you can. Um, like injustices and the different ways that people are intolerant and I think that's how it turns itself into like a philosophical novel well I think I you you had recommended that book to me and I I read it and <clears throat> loved it I love the the way it sounds it comes off like a fairy tale mm -hmm. you know I read to my son and and this is more of like a fairy tale with these this horrible content yeah yeah it's so sarcastic Yep. Um, and I did some research, and he was responding to Leibniz. Yeah, that yeah. was it, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Leibniz was a poor philosopher. He like comes up with an idea, and he goes, "Well, you know, I believe in God. Maybe this is the best of all possible worlds." Yeah. And he's like a boring old philosopher, and he writes his little thing. And he goes like, "All right, I'll just put that in the world." And then Voltaire, Voltaire like, yeah, reads it <laughs> and goes like, "All right, Leibniz, let's put your theory to the test." Yeah. And, and like everyone's gonna be making fun of you for the rest of time yeah um at the very end of the book um because I, I, I kind of mentioned this last part like they kind of all get back together and they've all everybody's suffered um <clears throat> they're just sort of like in this pitiable state sitting there and they have like these little candies citrons citrons and yeah. they're like eating the candies and they kind of go like citrons and pistachios pistachios that's what it was <laughs> and they go like well we have citrons and pistachios like i guess that means that it was all worth it <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and then the the last line of the book and we're probably wrapping up soon because yeah, it's like tend your garden right um yeah we, we must tend to our garden uh but we might we, oh, that's it but we must cultivate our garden. I guess different translators could have different Right, ways. right. Um, but just like a wonderful, I don't know if wonderful is the right word, but... It seems weak at the end. Like at the very end, Voltaire just goes, oh yeah. It felt like he took a whole bunch of enjoyment in just like running with the sarcasm and the horrible and the whole world. And then at the end... There's like, like, like you didn't mention. There's like a woman on the ship that they're just talking about, and they're talking about the best world, and they're sitting in a row, and it's like, you know, it's like Candide, Pandagloss, and then this old lady, yeah. and she's like cocked to the side. Yeah, she's missing her buttocks. Yeah, because they starved to death, and she yeah. ate that. They yeah. ate somebody ate her butt cheek. Yeah, there's like, a, there's a great episode <laughs> where they decide they go, hey, let's go around the table. And we'll each, we'll figure out who has the worst story. Yeah. And as it goes along, yeah. they go, like, they go through this, like, series of things, and the other person's sitting there going, what? That's nothing. <laughs> and then you hear the next story, and you're like, Jesus Christ. At the end of it, it's like a woman that had her ass cannibalized. Yeah. And then, it, well, and then, yeah. and then at the very end of this whole book, he's just sort of, they're, like, sitting there, and they're, they're just like, you know, cultivate our garden. I, th I, th I think like the end of it is still supposed to be. It's sarcastic. supposed to. It's supposed. You think it's supposed to be sarcastic? Still sarcastic. It has to be. It's like one yeah. sentence, right? There's no. Yeah. There's no demonstration throughout anything. There's no. It's. It's like. Doesn't make yeah. you feel good about the world unless you can laugh the whole time. He does make you laugh. He does make you laugh. Um. <laughs> it, it it's like the same thing as like or at, like it ends like as vapidly as saying like everybody just needs to use common sense. Yeah, and think that that's gonna yeah do anything, like yeah. I I think it's just, just say no, yeah just say no. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good though. Um, I think you know it's pretty good. I love I love the book. I thought I know. Yeah, I mean good. as far as like the thing, I don't know. I think it was pretty good. We'll see, see if you get any likes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we wrap up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so. <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> thank you for watching. Uh, leave a comment if you would like. Uh, do you want to say goodbye? No. I mean, sure.
<laughs> Kevin says goodbye, and I say goodbye. Thank you. Bye.